unwanted activity. <laughs> in this period, they also went on many holidays together. But as my travel conscious daughter pointed out to me, single room supplements are very, very expensive. <laughs> and it made a lot more sense to buy a double holiday. Now, I pointed out to her that I'd never seen her pack bags big enough to contain a bolster. <laughs> but, but she told me that the hotels they stayed in generally had bolsters available for use by couples in their situation. No, I didn't believe a damn word of it either, but <laughs> I've checked, there are no bolsters upstairs, so knock yourself, well don't knock yourself out, that would be it. But, but, but if it is all a bit of a novelty, and you know, you have been telling the truth, I do have this picture <laughs> that you did all those years ago, and Andy, to be honest, if she comes at you with a green felt tip pen, <laughs> boy, that's going to hurt. <laughs> so there we are. We're pretty well up to date. I've walked her down the aisle. Surely the proudest moment, well, one of the proudest moments for any dad, I've given her away. Well, given her away. I mean, I'm used to the fact that if you want to get rid of an old bedstead, the council take it for money, but this is ridiculous. But, <laughs> but it's not really giving away, is it? It's more like handing on a cherished possession, like a classic car. I mean, I've loved her. I've cherished her. I've cared for her. And now I know that Andy will love, care and cherish her. But in the same way that when you hand on a car, you should give some description of the service history. I think, <laughs> well, she can be a bit thirsty on the old juice, but I think we've already discussed that. So <laughs> she can be a bit difficult to get started in the morning, but I'm sure with a bit of effort, you can get her going. Um, all her accessories work, as far as I know. As <laughs> far as I know. Uh, body work's not in bad nick. Not considering the number of miles on the clock. <laughs> oh, OK, all right. Body work's not in bad nick. Pause. But I should warn you about the annoying wine. <laughs> you see, over the years, Rosemary and I have noticed there are occasions when Emily's voice goes up so high that it can only be heard by bats and certain breeds of small dog and completely inaudible to the human ear. Now, equally well, Andy, for your benefit, we've worked out when this is. And it's when she's either very, very excited or when she's in great pain. Now, normally this wouldn't matter, but this being a honeymoon period, if you get mixed up between the signal for I'm in quite a lot of pain and I'm very excited, this could be a disaster of a honeymoon, let's face it. I mean, to be honest, you get those two pain and pleasures mixed up. This could be the short, you could be on the first plane back on Monday, frankly. In fact, you get this mixed up, Frank, there's not, a th there's not one single damn thing you're actually thinking about it. What you do is you get all the pillows, unwanted bolsters, cushions in the room, put them round her, right? <laughs> then you get her really, really drunk. She will fall over but will not be bruised because of the soft furnishing. In the morning, you tell her what a tiger she was and just try to do it right the next time. <laughs> there you are, my tip for dealing for a happy life with Emily copious amounts of alcohol. <laughs> it's worked for me. <laughs> so there we are. We've got them wed, we've got them fed, and I do actually think it's about time for me to sit down and get well and truly watered. And I thank you for your indulgence. But before I do, I'd like to beg one more minute to say a few words to Emily. This is the bit you didn't want. <laughs> you see, Emily, all those years ago, I wanted to call you Poppy. And your mum vetoed it, and she was quite right, because, frankly, my motive was rubbish. You see, part of me thought that if we gave you a special standout name, it would somehow make you special, make you stand out, give you an edge. Only now I see the light. You didn't need a special name to do that, because you've done all that by being just the way you are, because you are special. You have achieved wonderful things. You have married a wonderful guy. And yes, you are a little eccentric. Which, after all, is how I know they didn't swap her in the delivery room. <laughs> and that I am your father. <laughs> and that one fact means that I have the distinct privilege and honour of being the first person to formally introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. Andrew Laycott. And on behalf of all the guests, amazing Emily, wonderful Andy, I wish you all the health and happiness in the world for your future life together. And if you are able, please be upstanding. And raise your glasses. For the toast is the bride and groom.
slightly nervous now after this stand innovation. But thank you, Robert, for the kind words and the bolster is in the car. So I'll go back to you in the morning. Um, now for an easy, hopefully, applaud on behalf of my wife and I. <laughs> I'll sit down. <laughs> Quit while you're ahead. Well, yeah. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. It does mean a lot to us. It, it certainly wouldn't have been the same without you all here. Um, traditionally, my speech is a, a very long list of thank yous, and I will try to keep it as short as humanly possible and not make it turn into an Oscar acceptance speech, which will be for next year. <laughs> um, there will be a number of toasts, so please don't neck your drinks. First class. <laughs> not mentioning any names. That table there. <laughs> that table over there. Um, firstly, there's obviously a, a number of people, as Robert well said, to mention my dad, but a number of other people that can't be with us today for various reasons, and I know that our thoughts are, are with them. So the first toast I'd like to raise is to absent and family and friend. Absent family and friends. Is that enough? It's all right, just knock it down the floor. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, my first thank you is to Robert and Rosemary for firstly welcoming, welcoming me into the family, um, even though I've been made to feel part of it for many, many years. I know I've been with Emily for probably far too long um, to not be a married man. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me put, it's a natural pause to be, not to be a married man, which I've rectified hopefully today. Um, also, thank you for letting me marry Emily, even though I didn't formally ask for permission. Um, I'm still undecided. Oh, I'm more than willing to do the Crystal Maze style challenges. Not in this suit, though. It's it maybe just rented, but it'll be a bit difficult to get in and out of various mazes. Um, there is somewhere uh, a small token of our appreciation. I don't quite know where it's gone. I think it may be coming off of the back there. Oh. There we are. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do <laughs> so that's the, that was the next speech. Um, secondly, well, I would also like to thank you as another small present to, to come shortly, but for the, the love and support that you and Dad gave me for the first 27 years of my life. Um, it must have been incredibly difficult to have such a perfect son. But <laughs> <laughs> you did do a very good job. <laughs> But thank you for always being there whenever I've needed it and, and just being a mum. I think it's probably the, the only way I can use it again. Thank I'll you. magic. <laughs> um, the next small part of my, my speech was supposed to be to embarrass Emily. Um, I think that's probably been done now. So <laughs> um, I don't also... Six hours into a marriage, it's probably not the time to get into trouble. <laughs> so um, I, I feel like I've, I've had a good six-year run of staying away from being married, but I, I did feel it was time to commit. And <laughs> I've seen what I can get away with. It's, it's working well so far. Um, but I thought in order to, to propose, I'd, I'd do it in a way that nobody would ever expect. Uh, Valentine's Day in Rome, by the very time. It seemed to work. Um, but I, I really have to say this is the, the happiest day of my life. I, I hate posing for photos and, and, sm and having to do a fake smile, but I've, I don't think I've actually needed to today. It's just been there on my face. But, um, it, it, I say it really is the greatest day of my life. Emily, on the other hand, has been to see you two twice. <laughs> and, and, and Roger Federer play tennis, so I'm, I'm sure today must be in the top four or five somewhere. <laughs> Not forgetting the Jimmy Choo shoes. But, see, you can have an applause for that. It's an easy audience. Johnny's going to be fine. <laughs> no pressure. Um, I was, I've not prepared a, a speech to say how much I love you and how um, happy I am today. I, it's just, I, it's not the sort of person I am, obviously, but I, I, I'm lost for words with how much I love you.